into the cloud. Good morning, Anne. <laughs> well, good morning and welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. Please repeat after me. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and healing. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and healing. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and peace. And what a wonderful spring forward day. Thank you for joining us at the Center for Conscious Living. We spring forward and it'll pay off tonight when we get an extra hour of daylight. So we have a wonderful, beautiful service planned for you. We have practitioners throughout the Zoom and they will be holding the high watch. That's holding the consciousness. And what that actually means is that they know the spiritual principles and truths. So if you have something that you wanna just release to them and let them clear it, let it be. Um, I don't recommend taking it back, but <laughs> it's your path and your choice. Um, we have today uh, Reverend Paul Hoyt, who's our, pack, our uh, pastoral support, and he'll be putting things into the chat room for us. We have Lynn Sider, who is third, who will be holding consciousness for this service. We have Reverend Jerry Scott, who will be second for the week, so she'll handle all the prayer requests for the week. And we have Kathy Miller, who's second for today. She'll handle the prayer requests for today. And we have uh, Reverend Marlene Volper, who will actually uh, send out whatever's uh, called into the office. And we have our first practitioner, um, which is Chuck Carson, who will start our service with an opening invocation. Chuck. Good morning. So nice to see everybody here on this beautiful day. And what a gorgeous day this is. And so I invite you to close your eyes. And as we relax into prayer, let us feel God's loving embrace. And let us feel gratitude for this new and wonderful day. For this is a day of peace, of joy, prosperity and abundance, a day of wholeness and wellness and happiness, knowing that miraculous healing is taking place on this day. For this is a day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so today's service is a celebration of this day. It is a celebration of the goodness of God within and all around our lives knowing that God is right here now, breathing our breath and beating our hearts and thinking our thoughts. And so we celebrate this divine presence of God, knowing that this service is the activity of God, that every aspect of this service is divinely inspired and divinely guided. And I'm so thankful for all of those in service today, knowing that each one is expressing God so magnificently. So thankful for the Center for Conscious Living, this wonderful community where we come together and we celebrate the joy of God within and all around us at all times. And we thank Reverend Carroll for creating this wonderful Center for Conscious Living where we deepen in spirituality. And so I am so thankful for each one here as each one here adds to the consciousness and the beauty of this service. And so during this service, let us sit back and relax. Let us let go of thoughts about yesterday. Let us release any plans for tomorrow. And let us just be here now in the loving presence of God. And so it is. Amen. Amen. And so it is. Beautiful, Chuck. And I love to rejoice. So I'm right there with that prayer. And we have um, a wonderful a musician today that will do our music. That's Norman Taylor. And it's a delight to always introduce Norman and his music. All right, thank you very much. This is one of mine, it's called Making It Better.
promise of a new day. Things are going our way. Joy and laughter all around. Let's got sound. See the people rising. See the children smiling. Standing up for what's right. Putting up a good fight. We're coming together, making it better for us all. In the streets marching, there's a movement starting. Love and kindness is a theme. Living up to our dreams. Working by the hour. Speaking truth to power. Striving for a better land. That's the master plan. Thank you, Norman. Thank you so much. And I'm going to invite up our Chuck Carson for our inspirational reading and today's affirmation that will be in the chat room. Okay. Uh, today's reading is from 365 Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And this is on page 79. Identification. Spiritual mind treatment is an affirmation of the divine presence in and through all things, all people and all events. There is one intelligent law governing all things. We live in this divine presence and may consciously use the universal law. But someone might ask, how does our prayer, our treatment or our affirmation reach the person, place or thing we wish to help? This question is answered when we come to realize that we are individualized expressions of the one life. Mm. Whenever we identify our thinking with some person or thing, we identify him or her or it as an object of that thinking. And automatically, because there is one law operating, the result of that thinking will be for the person or thing. Since the focus of our treatment or prayer 
is on the one mind, the mere act of identifying our affirmation with that person or thing brings about an effect upon him or her or it. Today, I am identifying myself, everyone else, and everything I do with the divine presence. I am not trying to influence people. I am not holding thoughts to make things happen. I am not concentrating divine energies for any purpose whatsoever. Rather, I am still knowing that God is over all, in all, and through all. Through my affirmation, I am watching, expecting, and knowing that there will be reaction through whatever I identify with my word. Therefore, I am at ease. I am at peace. I affirm the divine presence and its manifestations as happiness, prosperity, and well-being for everyone. And now, if you'll, um, well, we can't turn to the bulletin, can we? So <laughs> I'm going to read the affirmation, and uh, we can all read it together. Uh, divine right action is always taking place in my life. Only good comes from each experience. I am outrageously blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> and we have more music. Hold on one second. <laughs> Apologies. No, that was uh, Chuck Carson, who, who is our first practitioner. He's been part of the Stewardship Council. So it's a year round commitment in many different ways that Chuck serves this community. So thank you, Chuck. A beautiful reading. All right, I think, I think I'm ready here. <laughs> What's all the fuss about? Why can't we get along? Maybe we ought to talk about the good that's going on. Everybody knows there's a better way. And everyone's hoping and praying one day there'll be love all around the world. There'll be peace and understanding. There'll be joy all around the world. There'll be happy children singing all around the world. Can't you just feel it everywhere? Powerful spirit up in the air. Won't be no reason to sing the blues. There won't be nothing on radio but good news. There'll be love all around. There'll be peace and understanding. There'll be joy all around the world. There'll be happy children singing. You know we're gonna bring about a positive change. Can't help but thinking about things seem so strange. How do we get away from all the misery and pain and feel the sunshine and the pouring rain? Cause there'll be love all around the world. There'll be joy all around the world. There'll be peace and understanding. There'll be happy children singing all around the world. Ah, thank you, Norman. We have a wonderful guest speaker today, and I am so delighted that I get to introduce Reverend Sue Locke. I've worked with Reverend Sue. Actually, she's worked with me. I've attended classes, spiritual practices, and um, 
loss and grief classes that she done. She also was my practitioner advisor when I first finished practitioner class. And you, you have this period of time where you work with another practitioner. Um, she is a hero to me and I believe she has always been a beacon of light and just a beautiful representative of the Center for Conscious Living. And I, I can go on and on. So um, she did a beautiful bio that we included in, in the, our weekly message. So it is my pleasure truly to introduce Reverend Sulak as our guest speaker today. Aw, thank you, Michael. My pleasure. And I just want to ask everyone to go to their reaction block and let's give Reverend Michael and Reverend Paul a big heart shout out for stepping up and being our ministers during this extraordinary time. We are so blessed. And I just, I love them both. And I know they love all of us and we are just thrilled. So thank you both. Thank you both. Big, big heart reaction there somehow. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I always like to start with a little bit of poetry. And this is from William Wordsworth. Through primrose tufts in that green bower, the periwinkle trailed its wreaths. And tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. The birds around me hopped and played their thoughts I cannot measure, but the least motion which they made, it seemed a thrill of pleasure. So welcome spring, welcome everyone. I, and it's my pleasure really to uh, be here with you today. Um, it's just amazing. And I wanna start out by sending out a lot of gratitude. And I want you in this moment to realize with great gratitude how amazing it is. We are all still here. We have all been through a worldwide pandemic and we are all here together today. So I just wanna say thank you God and, and thank you for the blessing that that really is. I mean, it's hard to take in sometimes, but wow. This is a wow. So God bless us all. Um, I just uh, really want to start to with a little bit of breath work so we can center in. So let's just get comfortable. And the breath work we're going to do is very simple, but it's very powerful. Uh, we're just going to close our eyes and put your tongue at the root of your mouth. We're going to breathe in through our nose with our mouth closed, hold that breath for seven, count of seven, and then release on the count of nine. It is in the release that the work is really done. And we're going to do that three times just so we can all come into this place together. So let's start, just begin, breathe in to seven. Seven, eight, nine, release through your mouth. And again, in through your nose, the count of seven. Hold. And release. And one more time. And release. Mm. Great, thank you. Thank you. So today I wanna to revisit um, the power of prayer. The power of prayers that Chuck just spoke about. And by the way, it's one mind because Chuck, I don't think knew what I was really going to discuss today. And he just picked the perfect reading. 
from owners' homes. I just love when this happens. It's like, whoo, good stuff. The divine that God has given us is so powerful. And we have become, through that power, conscious beings. We are conscious beings. And that's a God-given, spirit-driven gift. And sometimes we need to revisit what it is we're actually anticipating, what we're doing, what we're thinking as conscious beings, especially when it comes to our prayers. Ernest Holmes in Living the Science of Mind. I know there is a power for good which is responding to me and bringing into my experience that is necessary for the unfoldment. It's necessary to my happiness, necessary to my peace, to, to my health, to my success. I know there is a power for good that enables me to help others and to bless this world. Now here's the catch. <laughs> we have to not only expect that good and, and call it in, we have to accept it. We have to accept it. And sometimes in order to do that truly, we have to make sure that the flow that we're calling in isn't blocked. It's very rarely a conscious thing that we block our good. Not like I woke up today and said, whoa, I don't want any good today. Yep, right? I don't want this good into my life. Of course we don't. Who would do that? But on a subconscious level, there may be something that's blocking the flow of those everyday miracles of our good, of the delight of life. Something might be blocking us and we are not really truly conscious of it in that moment. Sometimes we're like, I don't get it. Why is this always happening to me? I prayed, it didn't come. I thought I wanted this and I got that. What, what's, really, what, what's really going on sometimes? And it's very important for us to begin to take a look at the internal processes that are really just going on in this uh, creation, this mind of ours. Here's how Michael Beckwith puts it. Your relationship with yourself is so multi-layered that it requires a wholehearted commitment to cut through the core of your being to the transcendental self that you are. We have to cut through the core of our being so that we can let that radiance burst forward, let ourselves shine and let ourselves accept our good. I know I've had to do my work and I'm still doing my work. Um, and, and it's just, you know, for me, it's just part of life at this point. And uh, I'm always finding some little kink somewhere. And I love the analogy of the garden hose. I'm sure you've all heard before, right? It's that time of year, we're gonna go out, we're all excited and we're gonna plant some herbs or we're gonna plant some bulbs. And then we go and get the garden hose. We wanna do a little watering and we get the hose out to a certain point and it, but the water doesn't come through. And you're like, ugh, what happened? What happened? We all know what happened, right? Probably one tiny little kink one little kink is keeping the flow of the water from coming through when we need it. One little kink. Sometimes more than one little kink. Maybe the hose got knotted. I know when I was doing and still doing my work, sometimes it's not just a little kink. Sometimes it's like a sailor's knot. <laughs> it's like, what in the world is this? What do I have to look at now? What do I have to unravel 
to come to a place where I can find peace and I can allow my good to come in and not be blocked by some past experience one way or another, I've got to do the work or, or that particular dynamic will keep coming back to me until I undo that sailor's knot. Just seems to be the way it is. And it's important work, just like Ernest Holmes says, Ernest says, there is no obstruction. One cannot dissipate by the power of truth. So we learn to go deeply within ourselves and speak as though there were a presence there that knows. It is most worthwhile to commune with spirit, to sense and feel it. And here's the little card, go deeply within, go deeply within. In recent weeks, um, we saw with absolute uh, you know, heartbreaking uh, news, what was going on in Texas. Texas is an enormous state, has this incredible statewide power grid, has an enormous water system. Most people are able to access water freely. Most people flip a switch and electricity comes on, but there was this horrific storm a snowstorm and the temperatures dropped unbelievably low below freezing. And guess what? The power grid that was in place and Texans thought would sustain them broke down. It had not been updated to a point and they did not anticipate that they would have to accept the idea that they needed to do the work on the power grid or they wouldn't get the good of their electricity to flow into their home. And it's interesting, the same thing happened with their water supply. Normally they would turn on a spigot and the water would come through. But many pipes burst and ruined homes and many people didn't even have access to water because the pipes froze in the ground. And what I found out was that in Texas, much of the ground is very hard. It's hard clay. And it's very difficult to dig into it. So most of the pipelines are only six inches deep, well above the freeze line. Here in New Jersey, there's a lull. Our pipes have to be below the freeze line. So when horrific storms come through, the pipes can't freeze in the ground, or that at least they shouldn't. So I thought this was a great example of how you think everything is okay. You think, and I think, not you, me, us, we think we've done our work. We think we've got everything in place, but if a trauma comes, if some, something unforeseen comes, have we done the work enough to maintain our consciousness and our heart and our spiritual practice to maintain our good and accept it. And this is for me, you know, it just, it, it's something that is a continually evolving process because like Michael Beckwith said, you know, we need to get to the core of things. And there's, for me, there's lots of different things. And we don't always understand it, what's going on, and, and we have to take it step by step. And we must, we must, we must be very gentle with ourselves in this process. This is not an easy thing for any of us, because what we're talking about here is something that our minds, to protect us, it's a good thing, our minds block this off so it so it didn't destroy us it so it didn't unravel us it we it was able to put it away somewhere until we were ready to deal with it which is why we have to be so gentle with ourselves this isn't easy it isn't an easy thing and i really want to say at this point 
before I go any further, that this is something for me, and I think for most of us, that we want to reach out to someone, someone who we trust, someone who is going to understand and listen gently. We have wonderful ministers and practitioners. And if you need some help from one of us, you can contact the office or you can contact Reverend Michael or Reverend Paul. You may need a professional. Maybe you feel better going to a psychologist. Um, it, it's up a, a group. There are many groups out there that help people navigate these waters. But it's important for us to do this work. It's part of our spiritual practice. And let's face it, we didn't come to science and mind by being spiritual babies. <laughs> this is a very mature and extremely powerful way of learning to be present in our life and in the world. This is a spiritual practice that covers all the different types of religions because it's about consciousness. It's about the law and love. So this work is something that we've been called to do and it's so important. It's so important. And I just wanna also say, as you begin this process, you wanna make sure you get through it. Don't get stuck. <laughs> Remember, if you're going through hell, don't build a condo. Don't build a condo there. <laughs> you wanna get through it. You wanna look at it, bring light to it, heal it, scream, cry, whatever you have to do, but get through it. So then it doesn't have this amazing influence. I remember going through it and I remember saying to someone, can I keep the dragon in the, in the cage? I just wanna keep the dragon in the cage. And they said to me, no, you, you really can't. And what happened was once I let the dragon in my subconscious out of my cage, guess what? It wasn't a dragon at all. It no longer had power. It wasn't some fire breathing monster waiting to destroy me, just the opposite. By letting it out, it became something for me to heal and move on from. I let the dragon out of the cage. And then you get to be like the, the good witch of the East. Be gone, you stupid dragon. You have no power here, right? Remember that? Be gone. <laughs> you have no power here. That's what happens. That's the joy of getting through it. And we may always have, uh, you know, remnants of things that will come up that we deal with. But guess what? It'll be a more conscious dealing. You'll be able to see things differently. You'll be able to navigate through these processes with the divine ever present and you can consciously call in your good. You can consciously call it in and guess what? You're gonna be able to accept it, accept our good. What could be better than that? I mean, really, whatever it was, once we allow ourselves to shine a light on the pain, the abuse, the abandonment, the trauma, whatever it is, once we sign some light on it, it truly is not the dragon in the cage of our subconscious anymore. And we can, we can diffuse it. We can diffuse it. It's extraordinary. Once we unkink the hose, the flow of our good is able to come to us. So when we call it in, when we call it in, come on, come on, come on prosperity, come on love, come on joy, call it in, call it in and let yourself accept it, accept it, accept it. I accept, I accept, I accept. Let the universe know that when you say yes, you're really ready to accept it. It's huge. 
It's in the accepting. It's in the accepting that we get to manifest. It's in the accepting that we get to fill our lives, every cell of our being with the good that we all deserve. Because we are the beloved children of the beloved. We are the beloved children of the beloved. And the law tells us that when we are ready to ask for something, the universe, what? What do we always say at the end of service? Yes, the universe says yes, but you've got to make sure what you're asking for, right? And in treatment, just like Chuck was saying, just like the beautiful prayers that we all say for each other, we are praying from a point of acknowledging that God, the divine, has already given us every gift. Everyone, it's there. Our job is to accept it. Our job is to pray appropriately and call it in. We've learned as children, most of us, to pray, to beg, to plead, to feel bad about ourselves, to say, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, please, please, please. No wonder we have trouble accepting our good. The constraints of religion through the years has put these layers on top of layers of things that we take in as a child. These are one of the things we have to look at. Am I worthy of praying? Am I worthy of, of accepting? And the answer is yes. It's that simple, but we've got to be in a place where we can say it and do it and pray affirmatively and call in the good that's waiting there. It's like, it's right here. It's right here and something may be pushing it away. Don't let that happen. We need to do the work. And I could tell you truly, as painful as it might seem, when you get to the other side of letting that dragon out of the cage, it is such a blessing. And you'll be able to share your light more brightly. It's just the way it is for all of us. And, and please reach out if you need to be reminded, if you need help, and trust me, we all do. I ask for help, I ask for prayers. Because when we're in it, when we're in the middle of something, it's really tough to see the other side. It's really tough to reach out and say, I need help. Please, you pray for me. Can, can you know the truth for me? Please, know the truth for me until I can get there. It's, it's a miracle. We have a whole community willing to support you in so many ways. Look around this, look around your Zoom. This is our spiritual family. We have called in a spiritual family. And God bless Zoom. Well, phew. I mean, really, what a miracle. We are still able we, to see each other, to smile, to pray, to send requests in when we need prayer. We, this community is a living, vibrant, absolutely gorgeous expression of the manifestation of consciousness. Of co we call ourselves what, the Center for Conscious Living. Woo. Think about that one for a while. Contemplate that one for a while. Each of us is a part of a center for conscious living. How's that sound? I'm in. Anybody in? Anybody in? <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I love you. And I, I really just want to help us understand that we are loved beyond measure. We are supported by the universe in ways that I cannot even comprehend. I really can't. I know it's the truth. That's why I put that affirmation in today. Divine right action 
is always in motion, not sometimes. It has to be that way or the universe would implode, right? It's the law that divine right action is in motion. And if I can claim that every experience has good in it, it doesn't have to feel good. It doesn't have to look good. In fact, sometimes it's hideous and horrible from this perspective beyond anything we would ever really want to experience on this plane. But something good is still happening. It's the divine presence in our lives. And it's up to us to reach a point where we can claim that good. So we need to clear ourselves so we can accept it, accept our good. No matter what we're seeing with these eyes, the divine's eyes see something bigger. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. So let's just take a moment now. Take a breath. Take a breath. We're going to, oh, we're just going to be together in this place. And I'm just going to ask you to repeat quietly after me. If you can, do it aloud. If not, just repeat to yourself. There is one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. It is flowing through me. That life is circulating in me. I am one with the rhythm of life. My heart beats with the pulsation of the universe. My heart beats with the pulsation of the universe. My heart beats in serenity. My heart beats in peace. My heart beats in joy. My whole physical being is animated by the divine spirit. My whole physical being is animated by the divine spirit. And if there is anything that doesn't belong, if there is anything that does not belong, it is cast out. If anything doesn't belong, it is cast out. Because there is one perfect life in me now. There is one perfect life in me now. I expect it. And I accept it. I accept my one perfect life. Say it again. I accept my one perfect life perfect life. And so it is. And so it is. Love you. Thank you. Love you too, Reverend Sue. What a beautiful message for today in the week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have our blessing of our offering by Reverend Paul. It's in the chat room if you would like to join me in the uh, offertory blessing. Thank you, God, for this abundance, abundance that is mine, that is mine share. share. I bless, I bless this, this gift and give it to thee in gratitude and joy, joy knowing, knowing that as I, as give, I give, I do I receive. receive. And so it is. <laughs> so it is. Thank you, Paul. And now we have Norman. Beautiful. Hey, so... Um, uh, you get an extra song today. <laughs> Was that me? That
Uh, yeah, yeah, you I'm do. proud it's of a, myself then because I love all, your music. It's all good. Thanks. It's all good. It was funny. That's why I was stalling. I was like, I was checking, <laughs> I was checking my notes to see if I had forgotten the song. But anyway, I have um, an extra song in service. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, a couple things. Um, first of all, I want to play a song that I just wrote. I'm I'm going to start working on it. I already have a uh, meditation of the blues out there somewhere, but I'm I'm starting to work on another project and hopefully I'll get in to record it sometime over the spring and summer and then have it out. But I just wanted to also, you know, I think some people already know, but Ginger Coyle is going to be kind of joining us in her own uh, musical journey. I think next week, right? Is yes, that right? Yes. Next week. And um, she has a single out right now. And I, I, I'm trying, my brain is not, is racking around the title of it, but they've been playing it on, on WXPN and stuff. So you can search it out. And I think she's put some stuff out there. That's that's the way we're releasing music these days. We're going back to doing singles like the old days when they were 45s, right? So, <laughs> but it's all electronic. So um, I just wanted to let you know that maybe she'll play it next week. I'm not sure. I can't, I, I, if I remember the song, I'll tell you guys before the um, before we end. But anyway, this is one of my songs. It's called um, Sweet, Sweet Music. And it, I always like to say it's my, my first and true love is music. So here we go. Thank you, Norman. Thank you. <laughs> I like that song, Sweet Thanks. Sweet Music. Thanks. I could sing that all day. Yeah, that's the idea. I want to get a radio hit going here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So right now we have, usually we do our welcoming to new uh, members. So let's do welcome to past, present, and future members together. If you raise your hand and repeat after me. Welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. We are a heart-centered spiritual community. We open ourselves to you in love. We recognize the perfection of God within you. We celebrate the joyous being that you are. 
You are a radiant point of light. We are blessed by your presence. Welcome home and welcome to our beautiful spiritual community. And now we have a mastermind covenant and that's another word for God or spirit. And I'll just give you the responses. So knowing there is a power, intelligence and wisdom greater than my own and knowing it is responsive to my every thought, word, action, and feeling, say aloud, I acknowledge. Surrendering to the power of the mastermind consciousness and knowing I am guided and assisted past any limited perception to God's truth within, now say, I surrender. Knowing forgiveness is the key to change, I now forgive myself and others for all mistakes and judgments and I open the door to unconditional love by saying, I forgive. Realizing my life is the creation of my own thoughts, I now choose to fill my mind with thoughts that are positive, loving, beautiful, and I allow my life to reflect that choice by saying, I choose. Holding the consciousness for the Center for Conscious Living, we now thank God for this continual prosperity of the spiritual community and for all its members and everyone. For myself, I now go within to the silence of my mind as I ask for my own specific request, knowing the universe always says yes. Please repeat after me, I accept. With a thankful heart and knowing that all I have asked in the name of the mastermind is now given to me, I say, thank you, God. And you, we can continue with the love of God enfolds me. The mind of God inspires me. The spirit of God enlightens me. The power of God encircles me. I am in God and all is well. For I am enthusiastic, excited, expected, and at peace. And together we can say, I'm grateful God has heard you. <laughs> I can almost hear that right through the Zoom. That's so wonderful. I love every part of that. Okay, we are now going to go into announcements, and I'd like to start with the season of peace and nonviolence. And we have Aji Schaefer representing, and it's honoring uh, diverse leaders to peace. Diversity leaders to peace. <laughs> yes, good morning. Oh, I am feeling the love this morning. I'm so happy to be with all of you. So I thank June for asking me to, to be a part of the season of uh, For Nine Violence by reading this morning's reflection. And I was really also touched by Reverend Sue's message. Uh, so I have some, some reflections that I'll read, but I want to start just with my inspiration from, from Reverend Sue um, is... I was asked to share about how, how honoring diversity is essential to a world where we can live in peace. And honoring diversity really touches on the paradox that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So at the same time we live, we exist in the mind of God as one. And from that oneness, that love, that perfection, that harmony and unity, spirit created a world of infinite diversity. And we look out into this world and we see this diversity and what do we do? We judge it. And this judgment takes so many forms. We judge what we do like and what we don't like and what's right and what's wrong. And ultimately any form of judgment that we hold in our mind and our heart is an attack. It's an attack rooted in separation and fear. And this judgment is a kink in the flow of love that is this perfection and oneness 
that is the truth of our being. It's a, it's a kink in the flow of love from our hearts into this world. Um, and so as we think about nonviolence, we can really reflect on honoring diversity as this call to hold the space for our spiritual being to have this human experience and, um, and replace judgment, this attack, this attack on what looks different in the external world to the truth of our, of our world, which is that we are rooted in oneness. And Gandhi said um, that civilization is the encouragement of differences and that our ability to reach unity in diversity will be the beauty and the test of our civilization. So what does it mean for us as people who believe in the power of thought, the power of our minds to co-create our reality with spirit and the clarity of our hearts that we bring to that to create a world of beauty and compassion and love for all of humanity. And now more than ever, um, I think we're really aware that we're being called as practitioners, and I say practitioners in the general sense of science of mind, of new thought, uh, philosophy and way of being to live by the code of the Jedi. And the Jedi stands for just the J-E-D-I, justice, equality, diversity, and inclusion, which really means honoring and being committed to the dignity of every person, whether we like it or not, whether we think it's right or wrong. So we don't get to pick and choose where we hold love, where we share love and where we are rooted in judgment. So the invitation this week is to be aware of any judgments, any thoughts, any remarks that show up within us and around us that are really a reflection of this judgment, that are a kink to the free flow of love, of, of divine truth that we are, that dehumanize, that depersonalize, that other another person. And that could be based on anything ethnicity, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, social class, political affiliation, outfits, what people look like. I mean, what we wear, it's anything that we are finding ourselves judging rather than honoring um, the diversity of this world. So that's the invitation and we'll do a, a very short reflection now if you would join, if you feel comfortable maybe closing your eyes for a moment. And just think about for a moment, if there's anyone or any group that you have judged. I mean, hey, we all have, right? That's part of our human experience. But we that we've judged to be less than or that we feel justified in judging. We feel justified in finding fault, in blaming, in seeing the wrong seeing the less than in that person or group of people. This could be intentionally or unintentionally. And just holding that judgment and maybe making a point this week to explore that, that judgment because the judgment is an attack. Can we replace that attack with peace within our hearts by learning something about this person or this group thinking about how we could stand in courageousness, honoring their unity with us, their unique qualities, their contribution to this world and to our lives. So let us repeat together the affirmation that we shared many times um, when we've been in person at CCL, gathered around the peace pole and really holding this, this place of love and peace within our hearts, unkinking the judgment, those attacks of fear and separation in our hearts. And let's um, say this affirmation together, keeping yourself muted. May peace prevail on earth. May peace prevail on earth. Thank you. And Ozzy, since you're speaking, can you talk of your group that meets today? Yes, yeah, so today we are meeting, we're having our first official gathering for our Black, Indigenous, and People of Color 
group. We're going to meet at 12 p.m. The Zoom link was sent out in this week's um, All CCL newsletter. So please join us if you're available. Um, it's from 12 to 2. If you can only stay for a short bit, that's cool too. We would love to have you and I uh, look forward to seeing you there. And again, this is for people who identify as Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Other announcements are the men's group meets tomorrow night at um, seven and their Zoom goes out. If you need that information, you can always contact the office. The office number is 722-5683 and that's an 856. And that's also in different mailings. Um, everybody should have received the mailing for our uh, 2021 goals and intentions. Um, please fill it out as the instructions say, you can either uh, email it to the office where uh, Reverend Marlene, our administrative goddess will put it in an envelope. You must send your address though, so she can mail it back to you next January, or you can mail it yourself to CC office, which is the post office box 44. And that's in Morristown, New Jersey, and it's 08057. Um, Reverend Paul and myself, Reverend Michael, we are happy to continue doing Three Minute Miracles. And um, if you would text us, we're eventually going to be doing them in breakout rooms and we're in the process of developing them. But for now, between 11 and noon, we'd be happy to do these Three Minute Miracles. You text us with your name and um, obviously your phone number, and we will uh, call you back in the order we, we receive them. And if it's after noon, then you can actually call them into the office and they would be included in today's email. Um, they are, another announcement, that they're looking for people that might be interested in becoming a practitioner. Even if you're curious, um, if you can call the office and let them know that we're planning to put something together um, to, uh, present to the group and answer all the questions. This won't be, it's not going to start next week, next month. So um, there is time. So, but if you are curious in any ways and you just want to know more about being a practitioner, you're on the fence, um, let us know. Contact the office and let us know that your interest. Um, Kathy, did you want to do an update? Sure, just um, the update is uh, for our selection committee. Um, again, we wanna just welcome Reverend Michael and Reverend Paul. We're so delighted that there are our interim ministers, yay. Um, we are putting the final touches on our job announcement and um, we'll be sending out um, across the region, across the nation, um, a call for our senior minister and uh, Certainly those who are serving now are also welcome and encouraged to apply. So we're in the process. Our uh, selection committee is now meeting twice a month. So um, we're busy doing that and we will keep you uh, apprised as soon as we have any new information. So thank you. We're also looking forward. If you have any comments uh, for the committee, uh, please uh, let the office know, it'll get to us. And um, we're hoping to do some, once we have some candidates, we'll be asking you your opinions and um, we may indeed do some uh, more visioning for and surveys for indeed what, what our uh, community is looking for. So thank you um, and thanks, Michael. Take care, everybody. You're most certainly welcome. Um, another announcement is that Reverend Julie Fisher does chanting for peace every morning at 8 a.m. If you're interested in joining it, her and the people that attend, uh, it's in the weekly mailing that goes out. And I just wanna say one other thing. This is a loving and beautiful community. And when Reverend Sue spoke about it, it just lifts my heart. I want you to share this community with people and welcome them into this community. Because if everybody had a community like this, I think we would do really well because <laughs> we can be in loving support of each other and and I do feel love when I'm here I do feel love when I look upon everybody and when you're looking at me I feel that love and we can share messages and we can heal things we can embrace diversity I'm like yes and we can embrace 
we can embrace the uniqueness and authenticness about you as an individual expression expansion of God. And when you're an individual and unique expression of God, you're not separate from God. It's not like you're one drop out of the ocean, you're part of the ocean. So we are one. So please share this. It, it just, if it comes up, share it because it is a beautiful community and I would love all my friends to be a part of this and family. So I, I thank you. We have another song and I think, <laughs> Yeah, I know good. I'm going to have to pay Norman out of my own pocket because I'm getting next to you. I'm good. I'm good there. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to say I saw a flash up of somebody from Japan. So konnichiwa. Um, somebody's watching us from Japan, which is which is awesome. So anyway, just want to point that out to y'all. We're, we're worldwide here at CCL. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, everywhere I go. Thank you again, Norman and Reverend Paul for our closing affirmation. If you will repeat after me, something wonderful is happening to me right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. <laughs> it is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. <laughs> Life is in my feelings. Life is in my feelings. <laughs> Life is in all my activities. Life is in all my activities. I receive it. I receive it. I share it. I share it. I am it. I am it. And I accept it. And I accept just it. The way, just the way that it is. Just the way that it is. Thank you, Life. Thank you, life. And accepting all these gifts, we say, yes! <laughs> beautiful, Michael. Beautiful, Sue. Beautiful, Paul. Beautiful, everybody. Everybody. It takes a lot of people to put a service together, and, and that's oh. everybody that's here. So many blessings. I'm going to put the number for prayers up again. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, are you, everybody can unmute and say hello. Yes. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. Hi, 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 everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Hello. 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 Hello.
so beautiful reverend sue thank you thank you thank you thank you prayer thank you it's beautiful how everything just is so flowing together. <laughs> yes, so much in flow. It's good to see you, sweetie. This was so inspiring. So meaningful. Thank you. Hello, Cher Schoolcraft. Yes. Hugs, everybody. Oh, get out, warm up. Extra hour of light tonight. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yep, spring is coming. That's for me. <laughs> the moon, everybody. <laughs> Every day yeah. longer to the 21st of June. Yes. <laughs> That's for me. Can't wait. Can't wait for the 21st of March, spring. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Oh, come next week. Yes. Yeah. Spring forward, everybody. Week, First yeah. full day of spring, the 21st. How here, wonderful. Hi. Thank you. Thank you all. Hello, everyone. It's um, <laughs> it's <a wee. laughs> Thank you for a beautiful, deep, and meaningful service. And um, I just enjoyed it so much and have expanded so much from it. So thank you all. Oh, thank you. Have a great week, everybody. Love you. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Darren Shoemaker. <laughs> I, the, I love the heart too. Heart. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Virgie. <laughs> this heart's for you. I know you like purple hearts. <laughs> I was like, how do I give her a purple heart? <laughs> Give me a purple heart. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hi, <laughs> Karen. Wait, Virgie. This is the hour. You, I loved that oh, garden. Linda Rica, I loved that garden hose analogy. I don't know who to credit for it, but loved it. I did too. You just leave. I did too. And I, I use a garden hose, and it's so bright, and it's such a good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so annoying when there's a kink. It's like, <clears throat> I know you have to go back. <laughs> Michael, that's exactly it. Because you have to go back to find the spot that it's kinked. And that's what we need, need to do in the kink in our in our knowingness of the divine. Beautiful mm -hmm. message today. Yeah. Beautiful. But I think it also is also speaks to the, the, the importance of having a strong foundation. Like you don't build a house yes. on bad ground. You know, yes. and anything we want to do in life, we have to prepare the soil, prepare the, the ground, prepare the foundation. And so just even when we're trying to go be our new, better, bigger, greater, wealthier whatever happier healthier selves we got to do some foundation think more adjectives add them in what do you want to add Cle to your life clearly that's not a love enough linda like i'm not getting it i'm not getting it <laughs> <laughs> joyful linda, and fun joyful, what, else? what else do we want to add <laughs> linda you're exactly right because that's what the spiritual practice is our spiritual practices keep us grounded in the divine, in the, yep. in the knowingness that we are one with the divine and that we are these amazing expressions of God. And if we, stay, if we, if we do the spiritual practice, it keeps us in that knowingness so that when the garden knows kinks, we can go, oh, it doesn't throw us off the track. We go, oh, okay, let me find the, let me find the kink and undo yeah. it. And, yeah. Have you Good noticed call. that the longer the hose is, sometimes the more kinks there are? Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the message there, walk tall and keep a short hose? No, what, what do we really <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, the, well, the short hose is letting go of the past. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, oh, boy, this good. metaphor. Oh, this good. metaphor is getting a little out of hand. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So next week we need a, a you know a topic on how to deal with other people's long hoses. 
Yeah, right. You can't do that. Uh, it's, it's actually our it's our responsibility. It's whatever whatever long hose they've got is is theirs, and we need to we need Amen. to. Amen. Uh, you at least look at our ho at our hose. <laughs> look right over here. People's long hoses. <laughs> I have a friend on the call today. Her name is Lisa. She's a first timer, but I can't release my video on this particular computer. But, but not a problem. Uh, I'm reading and smiling and sending Michael hearts to you. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you norman i love your music it's so thank you appreciate yes. it norman. your spirit comes welcome. right through thank you Peter. Thank and really it's even better it. than your background and your background is stellar like that mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, awesome. great. I'm a huge follower of the Tao. you know it's just it comes hey, from sir. all my martial art training and stuff so it's like really nice. big in me you know so yeah so i had to okay I everybody found, i found this so wonderful week <laughs> Thank you, Michael. You're most Love welcome. You Let me know the countdown's on because I'll end the meeting. If you okay. have anything else to say, say it. <laughs> I just want to say thank you How about, to all the energy that's going into this. keeping this going and, and the beautiful community that is here. I yeah. just, it's so beautiful to be in the space and feel all the love. It's just thank you for everything that you guys are doing. Uh, it's, it's great to have you. Who are you now, Sabrina? I'm not talking about Britt. I'm still in. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Carol. Bye, Karen. Peace and blessings. Love you Love all. You. All right, Steve. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. I missed you him. Oh, there he is. <laughs> he keeps jumping. All right. Have a great week, Steven. Right, Steven. Bless have a good day, you guys. Bye -bye. I have yeah. prayers to do. I have people that are yep. texting yeah. me. So bless you. Cool places and things. Love you all. Bye. 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 Bye.